Hello everyone, I'm Anshul Sedana. I'm here to talk about Rista and service provider routing. When you look at where we are today, we started with data centers, we built a company that's software first. Everything we've done has been focused on quality, architecture, scale. We've been shipping products for over a decade now. We have the broadest support for merchant silicon, and we have cloud networking solutions deployed at scale, both in switching use cases as well as routing. Today, we have the number two market share in high-speed data center networking. And on the right here shows our market share in just 100 gig ethernet, while we're number two overall in 10 gig and above in 100 gig, we have the number one market share already and growing. So how do we do this? The Arista stack consists of a broad choice of merchant silicon. We support seven different chip families, about 13 different combinations of flavors of different architectures, all of these enabled by Arista EOS. This is our software stack that is based on an object model so that you can store and stream state for everything a switch or a router might need, whether it's your BGP state or the color of an LED or the fan speed. Everything an operator needs is in EOS and gets streamed directly to the collectors or the analytics engines that go along with these. At Arista, we believe in very high quality and a lot of the focus comes from the architecture of EOS. Each of these agents are completely independent and can be patched, can be restarted, can be upgraded on their own. And many of our cloud customers today and some of our service provider customers then take on the stack and customize it by adding their own agents running on top. A good example is Facebook running OpenR inside of EOS to do routing and traffic engineering rather than the traditional BGP stack. We believe in open standards not proprietary locked-in tags or headers that customers find very, very inflexible. Here's a list of some of the open uh, standards technologies we already support, whether it's all the extensions based on eVPN or SRTE, it's all in EOS already. All of this is automated with Cloud Vision, and whether you can use Cloud Vision as an automation stack or Ansible or any other technology that you want to use on your own. A lot of our investment in routing, especially the platforms, comes from the R series. These are based on Jericho, Jericho Plus, Jericho 2, J2C Plus, and have a rich roadmap for Jericho 3 and beyond. All of this started for routing with us around 2014, 2015, when we introduced a lot of routes in the hardware, in the FIB. And at that point, we, can support, we could support 256K routes, which wasn't the internet table, but was worthy of being a router. Today, we've scaled our stack in the hardware to three and a half million routes in the chip without using big external power-hungry TCAMs. And we have a rich roadmap to keep on extending this in the future as well. Mind you, three and a half million routes is more than sufficient to, co to cover more than uh, two copies of the internet table today or one copy with lots of room for growth. And as a result of that, this fits in very, very well with our customers. Why is Arista being used in service provider networks? We started with our universal cloud networking technologies around 2016. Then we moved on to peering. Peering, as you know, has become a hot button on the internet where the carriers and the cloud companies and the content providers all meet. Then we moved on to telco NFP data centers, where it's like a leaf spine design, but you have a lot of tenants, you have a lot of tags, you have a lot of QoS policies to worry about, and all of that gets captured into our products using the OLA technologies we have. Then we moved on to content delivery, business VPN, backbone and TE use cases. Today, we're doing multi-cloud edge, and in the future, we are headed towards more backhaul for all of the 5G workloads and traffic that's getting deployed out there. But first, let's go back on how we model these designs and grew our routing footprint. 
we started with the data centers and very simple, resilient leaf spine designs. These could scale to very large pods or clusters in a data center. As customers started to outgrow those, guess what? We built many more of these using these parallel plane BGP style architectures and today can scale buildings that are filled with 10, 20, 30, 50 megawatts of compute infrastructure all under one leak spine design. But then our customers said, you know what, this is great for inside the data center, but I need to get out as well. So with our cloud customers, we start building these regional interconnect spines. All of this used to be internet connections or WAN, ne WAN networks. We replace these with standard leaf spine designs all the way to 100 kilometers with ZR optics, MPLS, MaxSec encryption, sometimes tunnel sec or IPsec, everything built in. This applies not just to our top cloud Titan customers, but also to our tier two cloud and service provider customers. Many of them want to model their networks using these types of backbone architectures. Today, the cloud is on one side, the service provider and the content providers on the other side, and they're all interconnecting at the cloud exchange. The cloud exchange is where you have the meet me point of all of the content, all of the cloud, with every enterprise, every carrier out there. We're actively deployed in these use cases and have lots of interest both, again, from service provider customers and cloud, and various use cases, whether it's cable, whether it's IoT, whether it's peering, whether it's content, 5G, you name it, everyone is trying to model towards these, and I believe this is the future of the internet, the internet getting restitched in a different way than it was done before, because in the end, everyone wants access to the content or, or the reverse path as well. 